Okay, guys, so I, I ran out of time on the last one. I apologize. Um, what I wanted to say was, just to refresh your memory, uh, we did the square root, square root, and we ended up factoring that way. We did the long method of factoring with this quadratic trinomial. You could have guessed and checked. I did the long method, and I got this. And now the V minus 5 on the bottom, there's a V and a 5 right there. I'm going to switch the order on both. That way the V is first and the 5 is second. So on this one, when I switch them, it's going to be V plus 5. And this one, when I switch it, it's going to be a negative V plus 5. So there's a negative V plus 5. Technically, if I pull out a negative 1 from both terms, if I factor out a negative 1, then I'll have the V minus 5. So let me rewrite this thing. I have the V plus 5 right there. And this other one, actually, let me do this. This other one, I want to factor out a negative 1 from it. And I'll have a V minus 5 left over. Now, on the bottom... And not only that, this negative 1 is being multiplied. Okay, so let me put that negative 1 in parentheses that I factored out. And on the bottom, we still have the 3v plus 2 and the v minus 5. So now I could actually cancel the v minus 5 with the v minus 5. So my final answer is the negative 1. You could put that negative 1 as a negative sign on your whole fraction with the V plus 5 up on top and a 3V plus 2 on the bottom. Or you could have taken that negative sign and obviously changed both of these up here if you wanted to. But that's your final answer for that one. That was number 5. Let's jump to number 12, the last one on the bottom part of the first page. Um, let's factor anything possible, okay? So if we look at this top one, you can't do anything with that. So we're just going to rewrite it. The bottom one, you could pull out the GCF of 2. So we're going to pull out a 2. And if we pull out a 2, we're going to end up with 5x minus 1 left over on the inside. Now let's take a look at this top right uh, numerator. Um, this is a difference of two squares. That's a perfect square term. That's a perfect square term. So technically, I could square root it, square root it, and then plug it into my answer format. So the square root of 25x squared is 5x. And the square root of 1, obviously, is 1. So 5x and 1 is going to be on both uh, binomials. And because there is no middle term, 1 has to be a plus, 1 has to be a minus. So that's how we factor uh, this one up here. Now for the bottom quadratic trinomial, we could factor that. And we're going to put the x and the x. And you simply think, what times what is the last number that if I combine together is a middle value? So that's going to be a negative 5 and a negative 5. So minus 5, minus 5. So negative 5 times a negative 5, that is positive 25. If I combine them together, it does give me the negative 10 in the middle. So step one is to completely factor everything possible, and we did. Okay, so now let's cancel things out because we have multiplication. This 5x minus 1 on the bottom will cancel out with the 5x minus 1 up there. The x minus 5, if I call that a binomial x minus 5, that binomial cancels out with one of these x minus 5s. So what I have left over is going to be, well, there's nothing left up here, but there is a 5x plus 1 up there. So I have a 5x plus 1 up on top. And on the bottom, I have 2 times x minus 5. So you could write it 2 times x minus 5. Of course, you could distribute. This is the right answer. Or you could say that your answer is 5x plus 1 over, if you distribute it, 2x minus 10. It all depends on... Uh, on you, okay? I would leave it in factored form like this. <clears throat> Let's now flip over the paper and work on the back side of this. So remember, when we are dividing by a fraction, you really re rewrite the first fraction, just bring it down, change the division to multiplication, and you're going to flip the second fraction. Remember, you're going to flip the numerator with the denominator. So you're going to have 
that fraction. <clears throat> so now, we don't have any addition or subtraction anywhere. It's all multiplication everywhere. So you could cancel out anything that's on the top and the bottom, okay? So uh, do we have A's on top and bottom? Yes, we do. We have three A's on the bottom. All three will cancel out with three of these, and you're going to have two left over up on top. Do we have Y's on top and bottom? Yes, we do. We have three Y's on the first fraction. All three Y's cancel out with three of these, and you're going to have four left over. But we also have Y squared up here, and now a Y to the fourth down here. So both Y's on the Y squared completely cancel with two of these four, and you end up with two left over on the bottom. So we've canceled out the Y's. Now let's go for the W's. Okay, so I have uh, one W right here on the bottom, which cancels out with one of these, and you'll have four left over. And then we could uh, cancel out these two W's on the bottom with two of these, and you'll have two left over up on top. So what do we have left? We have nothing right here, so let's move on to this up here. We have W squared, so that's what's going to be up on top, W squared, and on the bottom, we have y to the second power, y to the second power. So that's our answer right there, number 13. Let's jump to number 16 next. Again, step one is to factor out anything possible. So this first fraction, I'm going to factor out on the numerator, I'm going to factor out the GCF, which happens to be 3. If I pull out a 3, I'll have a x plus 2 left over, in parentheses on the inside. Now the bottom one, is x squared minus 9, so I, I know I could set it up as parenthesis, 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 x, x, where you think what times what is the last one that if you combine together is the middle one. Now there is no middle one, so what times what is negative 9 that if you combine together is nothing, because there is no middle term. That would be a positive 3 and a negative 3. Positive 3 times negative 3, that'll give you the negative 9 you have right here, and if you combine them it'll cancel out and you won't have a middle value. So we factored the top, we factored the bottom. Now uh, let's uh, do this. I'm going to change the, I'm going to change this to multiplication, and I'm going to flip it. So of course, on you don't have to even worry about that if you already flipped it. So you really have this times this, which is that fraction but flipped. Okay, so let me rewrite it down here times the second fraction. But of course, let's factor out anything possible right here, the 4 and the 12. You could pull out the GCF of 4. And if you do pull out a 4, what would you have left? x plus 3. And on the bottom, you could pull out a 6x. If you pull out a 6x, not only a 6, but also an x, uh, you're going to have an x uh, plus 2 left over on the inside. So this is our new problem, multiplication between two fractions and everything's factored, which means you have a bunch of multiplication, which means you could cancel out anything that's on top and bottom. So as you can see, we have an x plus 2 up here and an x plus 2 down there. Let's cancel them. As you can see, we have an x plus 3 down here and an x plus 3 up there. Let's cancel them. And as you could see, uh, we could, at the very least, reduce 4 over 6 because 4 is 2 times 2 and 6 is 3 times 2. If you reduce 4 over 6, it reduces down to 2 thirds. 2 up on top, 3 on the bottom. And now these are uh, coefficient values. So this 3 right here and this 3 up here, it could also cancel. So that 3 cancels with that 3. So what do we have left? Up on top, the only thing left up on top is a 2. It's the only thing left up on top. On the bottom, we have the binomial x minus 3, but we also have uh, this little x that's all by itself now, okay? So let's write down that x on the outside. And that's your final factored form answer. Or, of course, another answer acceptable is this one. But I would leave it in a factored form like this. That's, that's the best answer, in my opinion. Um, if they asked you what values would make it undefined, you would say, but x cannot be, it can't be 0, because if this were 0, then the whole denominator becomes 0. Or x cannot be uh, positive 3 also. So these are the two extra details if they were to ask you what values make it undefined. Anyway, let's move on to number 18. Now, 
on number 18, the left side, you have a difference of two squares. So you could square root the 9, square root the a squared, and you have a 3 and an a, and you could plug that into your answer format. But I think it might be a little easier to write the a squared first, which it does have a negative in front, and the positive 9 second. So you might want to do that. Once again, the negative a squared, I wrote it first before the positive 9. So that's how I got negative a squared plus 9. And now another thing that you could do, since we don't want a negative a squared, you could factor out a negative 1, okay? So you'd end up with a squared minus 9, okay? This is all just factoring the numerator of the first fraction. And not only that, this is an a squared minus 9, which they're both perfect square terms. You should recognize that you'll be able to factor this to become parenthesis, 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 a a with a 3 right there and a 3 right there and 1 being positive and 1 being negative because positive 3 times negative 3 is negative 9 if you add them together it gives you the middle value which is nothing right let's not forget about the negative 1 that's out here in the front so ladies and gentlemen that's barely the numerator factored uh, on the left fraction okay so let, let, let me start rewriting this over here on the side let me rewrite it so this just became the numerator. So I rewrote that whole one to this now factored form that's completely factored. Let me look at this bottom one right here. This bottom one's a quadratic trinomial, so we're going to set it up a and a. And then let's think, what times what is 6 that if I combine together is positive 5? That's a positive 3 and a positive 2. So now that uh, denominator is factored right here. Okay. And now notice this division. I change it to multiplication because I'm going to end up flipping the second fraction. So I'm going to factor this bottom one, and I'm going to pull out a 5, but notice I'm going to start writing it up on the top because that's where it's going to end up after we flip it. So on the inside of the parentheses, I'll have an a plus 2. Okay, and now I'm going to flip uh, this one right here and write it on the bottom, but I'm going to factor it as I move it to the bottom. So I could pull out a 2, and what would be left if I pull out a 2 it would be an a minus 3 left over. So now we do have everything completely factored. We have a bunch of multiplication. We could just cancel out anything that's the same on top and bottom, like the a plus 3 with the a plus 3, or like the a plus 2 that's on top with the a plus 2 that's down here, and also the a minus 3 that's up here and the a minus 3 that's on the bottom. So what do we really have left for number 18? What we really have left is negative 1 times 5. Well, that's negative 5 up on top. And on the bottom, there's nothing here. There's only a 2. So there's only a 2. So your answer is negative 5 halves.